Today, I want to talk about the role that facing death plays in living an exquisite life. Hi, I'm Lisa Lacroix, and this is my Artful Aging channel. I'm here for the voice, visibility, wisdom, and wealth of women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. We're going to be talking about things that are relevant to you as you transition into the next chapter of your life. I want your presence. I want your stories in the world. We're needed. We need to link arms together so that we all have more power, more sovereignty, and more visibility, as well as more representation so we can change the outdated narratives on aging and reclaim our space and bring the gifts that the world needs from us. If you're a woman of a certain age, if you are in your 40s, or especially your 50s, 60s, 70s, or beyond, you've most certainly faced grief and loss. There's no way through this life as a delicate human being without facing circumstances that we didn't expect and certainly didn't choose. While we don't have the ability to control the circumstances that are handed to us, we do have the ability to choose our responses to it. We as human beings are meaning-making machines and we get to choose the stories we assign to the circumstances of our lives. But when it comes to facing death, many, if not most of us, can be challenged to confront the fear, the uncertainty, especially so because our culture does not do a good job of preparing us. Our culture does not recognize the role that aging and death play in the trajectory of our life's journey. North American culture has, at least in recent generations, been poor at integrating the experience of facing aging and death into our culture. And in fact, we have become such a youth-oriented culture that there are whole industries built around stopping aging and even attempting to stop death. So while I'm grateful for the medical science and the industries that have made it possible for us to live healthier lives for longer, the question of pushing back against death and trying to win over death, trying to erase death from our existence as human beings, we have to do some both ethical and emotional dancing with how we're holding that pursuit. So maybe the answer to that is that it's fine to pursue the impossible. It's fine to audaciously chase an enormous challenge like ending death. But when we're taking on something like that, we're going to have the beautiful opportunity to dance within our own hearts and minds and spirits, but how we're holding that challenge. Because if we're pursuing such an impossible goal as ending aging and stopping death, we can be seduced into our already strong cultural narrative that it's bad to age. And so where does that place us, especially as women who have historically been valued for our youth, for our reproductive ability, for our visual beauty in a form that has become very narrowed? When the reality of human beauty is that human beings, by nature of being vibrant, have beauty innate to them, have radiance innate. And I'm gonna say that women, it's especially true of women, part of the feminine gift is a vibrancy and a radiance and an aliveness. The energy of being human that is in and of itself beautiful, that can be optimized, that can be built on, that can be celebrated and gifted into the world. That's part of the natural experience of being feminine in the world, but we've narrowed, our cultures narrowed our definition of beauty to be such a tiny little sliver that people are walking around thinking they need to do something different. Now don't get me wrong, I'm all for optimizing and 
I love beauty. I love beauty as a practice. I love beauty as a celebration. I love adornment as a self-care ritual. I love fashion as self-expression. And I think too often those of us who are in the second half of life have internalized the message that we're past that. And I'm going to take a stance for feminine beauty, embodiment, and radiance being accessible and available to us until our dying days. So together we can link arms and expand the definition of radiant feminine beauty back to its to its truth, which is so much more diverse, so much broader. But in order to do that, we need to link arms together, celebrate each other, lift each other up and make sure those old stories are replaced with maybe more of an original truth of humanness. So I started out talking about our experience of death and aging, because then in some ways they go part and parcel. If we're afraid of death, we're probably also afraid of aging. If we're afraid of aging, we're probably also afraid of death. But the truth is that aging and death are a natural part of our experience of being human. And that the more we can look it in the face and embrace it as part of the journey, the more we can live every day in the exquisiteness of being alive. I wrote an article quite a few years ago called Living an Exquisite Life in the Face of Death about some of the learning that I did before I'd faced the loss of any of my close family, probably five years before my mother died of pancreatic cancer. And I saw myself as I got older, wanting to integrate some of the lessons of people who were facing death more immediately than I was, wanting to learn from them and grow. And so I wrote an article telling the story of some friends of mine who were facing or had experienced death and some of the power and richness that it brought to their lives because of the choices they made about how they faced death. And then my mother died and I experienced the realness of loss and the, I'm going to say trauma <laughs> that losing my mother took me through. But then on the other side is and was a practice and a learning and an exploration of what does it mean to support a good death? What does it mean to have a good death? Because we were so lucky to have home hospice available to us and we were ushered through the process of a very fast decline from pancreatic cancer to death just three months after diagnosis by a beautiful team of hospice doctors led by a man named Sandy Buckman. We had a different experience than people who don't have that kind of resource available to them. Because we live in a culture that is run by medical practices around the attempt to stop death at all costs. Some of us don't have access to the support for getting to the place where we recognize that this is the next step in our journey and that there are choices we can make that make it less painful, less difficult, that we can deal with completing all the aspects of our lives that maybe were incomplete in our relationships, in our logistical aspects of our lives, in, in living a life that feels complete and whole and supported and connected so that we get a chance in those last moments when we have the gift of hospice, say, and we're supported through the process to say all the things that we want to say to the person who's leaving or as the person who's leaving. And not everyone gets the benefit of that gift in the moment. Some people die without expectation. So one of the gifts of touching death or seeing it or being exposed to it through someone else's gift of sharing it with you is that you get a reminder more often of how to live life every day so that if that happens 
to you or if you if if some you lose someone unexpectedly there's more chance of feeling complete in every moment so what does it mean to be living an exquisite life in every moment what does it mean to being complete and fully connected in all the ways you aspire to finish your life in every moment a year or so after my mom died i interviewed dr sandy buckman on my superpower you podcast and i'll put a link to the show below in case you want to listen to it because it's a beautiful story of how he sees ushering people through the process of death as similar to his work as a home birth doctor supporting families in ushering a new life into this world and i think there's something beautiful to that bookend experience that he has and i loved the interview with him it was especially precious and personal because he was my mother's hospice doctor after my mother died i had fair amount of experience of hypochondria. I think in my own body, my experience that the woman who gave birth to me, the woman who raised me, my mother could at a moment's notice be diagnosed with stage four cancer and quickly decline over the course of three months and then die, gave me a cellular experience and fear of that possibility in myself. So I experienced a lot of hypochondria for a number of years after she died. And it it got really strong about six or eight months ago where I regularly felt the fear that there was something wrong with me. So I was faced on a daily and weekly basis over the course of about three months, this deep felt belief that I was gonna die, that there was something wrong with me. And in facing that and in going through that, and the query of what am I going to tell my children? What do I need to do? How do I want to live my last lives? I got to try on, because I was in this hypochondria mode, the question of how do I want to live these last weeks because they might be my last? How do I want to interact with my children because it might be the end? And in so many ways, it was such a beautiful gift to have gone through that process and realized that if tomorrow I'm diagnosed with a fatal disease, or given a few days, weeks, or months to live, I wanna live those days, weeks, and months as art. I wanna find ways to contribute. I wanna leave behind some words of wisdom for my children. I wanna leave my voice and my mark on the world. I want my legacy to be fully expressed. And in the realizing of that, I myself got yet another reminder of the possibility of living my life in a day-to-day -day way that is as close as possible to being complete, to living an exquisite life, to creating the connections that I value, to making sure I don't leave things unsaid. And of course I'm not perfect because I'm human. I get back into the day to day and back into the experience of overwhelmed by all the to-dos and the things that are distractions. But I'm so grateful for those moments when I have a reminder of the fact that our lives can end any time, with warning or without. And the more we can live in a day-to-day -day way, appreciating the exquisiteness that is life and completing all the things and having it all left on the table, the more likely I am to live my life on a day-to-day -day basis like that. And the more likely I am to be so grateful for the reminders of what death offers to us. Today, somehow I was asked the question, are you afraid of death? I don't even remember how, but somewhere it popped up in my world, are you afraid of death? And the answer is that I still am somewhat afraid of death because I think that's part of our human journey. It's an unknown and it's not supported in our culture. But how we interact with that fear and how we grow towards the acceptance of death is one of the beautiful opportunities that we have available to us on this journey that is life as a delicate human being and one of the beautiful things about being a woman in a later chapter of life is i have that many more opportunities to address it i have that many more opportunities to assign new meaning to the impending reality of my own age and and death and also to what might be even more difficult the loss of other people so i'd ask you what stories are you assigning to death in your world, in your mind? What meaning are you making of aging? 
and of your inevitable death. What do you want to do with these moments and days and weeks that are your life right now? I'd love to know your thoughts on death and how you experience it and how you integrate it into the way that you live your life and how it shows up for you. If there's any other topic you want to hear about, please drop it in the comments. My intention is to be a place where I explore for myself and for you some of the some of the circumstances that we face so that we can live the most empowered, the most fully expressed, the most alive and enriched versions of our life in every day. So I hope some of these thoughts on living an exquisite life in the face of death uh, are useful to you. And I will put some resources in the show notes with the link to that article, with the link to my interview with Dr. Sandy Buckman, and maybe even to some links to interviews I've done with people who've experienced, who've had near-death experiences. I think there are about five people on my podcast who've had near-death experiences. And the exquisiteness of life they touch by going through through that experience because sometimes listening to a podcast with someone who has gone through the insights and gotten the insights they've had from that experience is wonderful because then we don't have to go through it ourselves and we get the benefit of it that's the great thing about interviewing people is we get insight and wisdom for free without sometimes paying the heavier cost of the difficult experience that allowed for it so thank you so much for being here. If you want more information or you'd like to check out another video, I'll put some links into the video here where you can check out one of the other playlists or one of the other videos that might be relevant to you around artful aging, speaking skills, or living an exquisite life in the second half. See you next time. <laughs>